thinking about and I took it upon myself to think of a challenge about how I would fix the Browns without firing anybody, right? Because <clears throat> if you look at the losses that we've had so far, they've been from a combined total, I want to say of six points. So we're not getting blown away. We're not getting crushed. So what is it? What is what is the way that this that things can get better? So I think a lot of the focus has got to be placed first and foremost on the defense, okay? And it starts, you can have those players-only meetings. You can have those those kind of heart-to-heart amongst yourselves. But at the end of the day, if you don't believe in the person that you are that you ultimately are responding to or reporting to, in this case, it's Joe Woods, then it's going to be really difficult to get past that. So, and it doesn't look like they're firing Joe Woods. And that's the, the purpose of this, of this video as well is to say, how do we fix it without without firing somebody? So if I'm Kevin Stefanski and you're the one who's ultimately held most accountable for the wins and losses and what happens on your football team, because at the end of the day, there will be a point of accountability at some point where you're going to have to make your stand and, 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 and plead your case to why you should remain the coach of the Cleveland Browns after this season. So if I'm Kevin Stefanski and I'm saying, I got to fix this team, first thing I would do is go to Joe Woods and say, Joe, what have we learned over the past two and a half seasons that would tell you or tell us what we need to improve? Focus on that first and foremost. And I think where it, where it comes down to is we play a lot of – it's scheming. On defense, it's scheme. We play a lot of soft zone. We play a version of football that is heavily focused on Miles Garrett getting to the quarterback. And if Miles doesn't get to the quarterback, we really don't have any type of rush. We never blitz the quarterback. We never create any sort of pressure unless we just get dumb luck, right? So if I'm Joe Woods, I'm going to get away from that soft zone. I'm going to go more one-on-one. -on -one. Trust the players that we have on the field. Trust the guys. There's a lot of first and second round draft picks out there. Trust those guys. Allow them to do what they need to do, okay? So I'm starting to change to a more blitz-heavy defense. I'm starting to think, let's get out of that zone. Let's start going more man-to-man -man and start getting more aggressive. We cannot sit there and pray that Miles gets to the quarterback and then everybody else falls into soft zone and then they just pick us apart. They look for the soft area, they nestle in, and the quarterback delivers. And that's happened all year. It has happened consistently. Now, there have been some shiny moments, and those are exceptions. Don't get me wrong. There are some exceptions that have been out there. But for the for for all intents and purposes, over the past two and a half years, the brand of football that this defense has put together has been don't beat us with one play. Take what We're going to give you stuff up front. We're going to hopefully allow you to make mistakes, and we're going to try to get the pressure on you with our defensive end. Now, the problem with that is we have been giving up big plays, right? We've been giving up big plays. Miles hasn't gotten to the quarterback because either they're scheming against him, meaning they're putting uh, an extra, they're putting a tight end there, they're putting him on the heavy side, or they're chipping him with a running back as well, or he's just over pursuing and that's becoming an issue and they're just going around him. So they're scheming around Miles Garrett at this point, right? And so. In order to fix that, we have to get to a position where things need to be adjusted, okay? And they need to be adjusted on the fly. They need to be adjusted mid-game, right? We're sitting there watching other teams make halftime adjustments and then executing them in the second half. And that's why we've given up 53 points in the fourth quarter. Because at crunch time, when these things matter, what, they're, what they've learned from what we're giving them in the first half, the first three quarters, comes to fruition at the end, and then they're executing. And either we're tired, or we're not communicating, or we lose our head, or we think the game's won, so we just, we just say whatever, like, who cares? And that has cost us games. And, you know, when push comes to shove, when, when, the, when the playoff contenders start getting sorted out, there is no room for error. Every win matters. 
every loss matters. And we are certainly going to be looking back at the end of the season and saying, man, if we just would have beaten the Jets, if we just would have finished over those, those finished out those minute and a half, if we just would have beaten the Falcons when we had a chance. And I think honestly, the reason why is we don't have an inspired coaching staff at this point. Kevin Stefanski is not an inspiring guy. He's not somebody who's going to rah-rah this team like a Greg Williams would, you know, and some other coaches we've had in the past. He's not that guy. He's stoic, which which is, that's who he is. That's the type of guy he is. He's cerebral, right? We knew that. We knew that bringing him in. He's a smart, smart, well-read guy. And typically guys like that are not as inspiring. They're not the motivation type, yell and scream, and emotional leader that oftentimes a lot of football requires so but that's not Kevin Stefanski we kind of knew that so if you're not going to get that out of your head coach who also happens to be your de facto offensive coordinator because he's the one calling the plays where are you getting that fire and energy you're not getting it from Joe Woods that guy has the personality of a walnut he is not getting out there getting after everybody he should at best be a position coach in the NFL I have not seen anything from this guy that would say that he is an elite defensive coordinator. And I would say the defensive successes that we've had thus far in the, in the past two and a half years has been despite Joe Woods, not because of anything that he's done. We have a lot of talent that's on this team. Miles Garrett, Denzel Ward, JOK. We've had Jadavion Clowney. Greg Newsome. We've had players out there that can kind of just play your way into success or play your way into being mediocre. And I think that's what we've gotten thus far in the Joe Woods era. Okay. So if you think back to, okay, so then what's going to do it? What is, look at that. What is going to be the difference maker here? How are we going to fix this situation? There has to be some accountability that starts with with Kevin Stefanski, starts there and moves from that point, okay? He's gotta deliver the message that it's unacceptable to fail in the execution of every aspect of this game. Other than Nick Chubb, there has been, and Kareem Hunt to a degree, I would say as well, there has not been accountability on this team. Those are the two guys that I would say, you've done everything right. Everybody else has failed in some aspect. Jacoby Brissett has thrown three interceptions in three key moments this season that have essentially ended games. Cade York has missed kicks, which have resulted in losses. Right? We had a gift this last week against uh, LA, the Chargers. We had a gift that was that that should never have happened. We should never have had been able to attempt another kick, and he misses it wide right. Those are unacceptable. Those are unacceptable failures in that, from an execution standpoint. I would go to Cade York, and if I'm Mike Prefer, and I said, "Got stop kicking the 70 yard blasts in practice. Just consistently hit the 45 yarder every time. It's like if you're a golfer, you don't need to hit drive. You don't need to crush a drive every play. Sometimes you, there's there's par threes. Sometimes there's a dog leg par four where you can't hit driver." You have to be able to master the other elements of the game because at best, you're going to have to do that. I mean, if you're kicking 60-plus field goals, 60-plus yard field goals, that might happen once or twice in a season. That actually might happen once or twice in a career. You're kicking 60-plus. You don't need to be in practice bashing them in in the pregame warm-up. I'm sorry, you don't have to. When you hit every single extra point, and every single kick under 50 yards, then I say go go blast it from 80 yards or however you want. But until that happens, you got to get better at the fundamental aspect of the game. All right? So that's number one. Focus on the fundamentals. Don't focus on these superhero or super Superman kicks or Superman plays. Start focusing, cracking down on that. All right? These are the sorts of things. I can't say anything else about the offense. We're rolling with a backup quarterback, a guy we've known this going into it. We knew Jacoby Brissett was not going to lead us to the promised land unless it was just some miracle. And Jacoby Brissett is the guy he is, right? He is the guy he is, 
right? So that's what it is. Um, Lamon Peace, Irish Spaghetti says he'd rather get blown out than lose close. I mean, I'm with you guys. But it's also very deflating if we if we get blown out. Um, I'd actually probably rather lose a close game and then refine the issues because I think if you go and you, you get blown out, then that is that's a systemic issue that you're like, look, we can't compete. This team can compete. And we are a couple – if we don't miss the kick in the Jets game, who knows what happens. We don't miss the kick – the kicks in Atlanta. Um, actually, did he miss kicks in Atlanta? No, he didn't. Well, Atlanta wasn't a kick. Uh, I meant L.A. We didn't, if, we missed, if we didn't miss those kicks, maybe we win the game. So it comes down to these sorts of small things. Okay, I'm not going to put it all on Cade York either. Cade York wasn't the one – you know, who's making decisions to go for it on fourth down in the opening drive in the Atlanta game. Cade York is just going out there trying to do what he does. And so that that really comes down. It's a full team effort to the, to some of these losses. So what I would say, guys, um, if I'm Kevin Stefanski, I'm trying to wrap my head around what's worked and what hasn't, look at a lot of film, and then start making some adjustments now. Because the groceries aren't going to be there. You're, you're, you've are you're shopped for your groceries. They're there. You've decided to trade away first-round picks. So there's no more first-round top talent coming in the next couple of years. That ain't, Unless they trade out some of the other players or just fall ass backwards into them. You're playing with the guys that you got. Okay? So you have got to get the best out of them. And we have talent. Grant Delpit's talented. Jacob Phillips is talented. JOK is talented. These guys have talent. We have got to get the best out of them. And it's not going to come from guys who just sit back there and whisper in the wind what things are happening. You've got to come out there with a little passion. My God, the passion is just not there. When we win a game, Stefanski's all you know fired up and passionate. But when, we, when we're not doing well, there's no energy in in the stadium on the brown side of the it's just like you stand they're standing around oh what was me and the players aren't firing each other up the players aren't holding each other accountable then that's the other thing there, there's there's a lack of personal accountability that's happening in these browns i don't know a lot of a lot of discussion that's being held out there some of these guys got the bag and now we're just kind of mailing it in and cashing their checks and that's the risk you run when you give, you know, really young guys a lot of money and you give them these big contracts based off of the talent they should have, the talent they should possess without getting necessarily the level of production that those paychecks would justify. I'm not saying on the Miles Garrett. I think Miles Garrett has shown that he's a force to be reckoned with. Denzel Ward's made out of glass. That dude's hurt all the time. And Joku's hurt, hurt all the time. It has never performed up to, you know, top five tight end production, right? But we're giving him a ton of money. Um, you know, so it's things like this that we got to start thinking about in terms of what adjustments need to be made. So we need to start getting the best out of the players we have. And that comes with pushing the envelope and pushing and getting some energy into this team. And getting people to believe, because I got to tell you, Deshaun Watson is not that type of leader. Deshaun Watson is not a fiery, let's go get him, you know, type rah rah leader. He is a stoic guy, just like Kevin Stefanski. He's gonna sit there and just be very mellow and quiet and and even keeled. And that's what he is. So you're not gonna get that out of these guys. You've got to get them out of your leaders, like JOK. And Miles Garrett, you got to get these guys pushing. And if they're not, then we're just going to be mediocre. And I'll tell you this: thank you guys for for um, you know for the chat, and thank you guys for for uh, your feedback. That you know you're, you're obviously agreeing with my points. Um, I would also say that the further down the road this gets, in terms of the losses that are starting to pile up, the further we get down the road the further it's starting to get to a point where, hey, this this season may be a wash. And, I, and I'll tell you this, and I thought this going into it, that this season was going to be a wash from the very beginning unless we had some miracle and Jacoby Brissett was like rocking and rolling with us, which he clearly isn't. He's done okay, 
He hasn't been the only problem. He's actually been very good at some points. But he's not a guy who's going to lead us to the promises. Not a, you can't hand Jacoby Brissett the ball with 30 seconds left like you can a Pat Mahomes. And I understand it's not a necessarily a completely fair comparison. But at the end of the day, there are backup quarterbacks that rise. And right now we're seeing basically what Jacoby Brissett is. Maybe even outperforming his career averages quite a bit. But this is the really the best we're going to get out of him. So what we have to do is we got to rely on the guys who we employ on this team who need to be able to produce. And if they're not producing, like if Miles Garrett is not beating rookie left tackles or backup left tackles, then there's something that they are doing to scheme around him. So we need to then adjust that scheme and we need to scheme around that. Okay? That's the that's how you pivot, that's how you adjust, that's how you get proactive versus being completely reactive and just allowing it to happen to you. This is the thing that I feel is is what's lacking the most from, from the Joe Woods era. Now, if you guys want my prediction, can you imagine if we had oh um, if we had Greg Williams as defense, he'd be losing his mind. Now the only the, the one criticism that Greg Williams had is when he put um, when he put Peppers, you know, forty yards back, which everybody questioned and scratched their head about that. But I don't think that's what Greg Williams would have w- would be doing today. Do I think Greg Williams is still he still has it? I don't know. I've seen him on cameo. He seems like kind of an old man now. But is there another defense coordinator out there that's got a little bit of passion that actually can can give you sort of what we got out of a Greg Williams and that kind of thing? Maybe. Maybe somebody that can relate to the players and get the most out of them. That's what needs to happen. I've been part of, I personally have been on championship teams in my life, whether it was in, in you know, as a young kid in high school, um, I was on a state championship football team. Um, I've been at and around, I've been in sales organizations that have been huge winners. And I got to tell you, the people who have the leaders that you can tell are just as bought in and that are killers. They're killers. These are guys that eat, sleep, and breathe the game and look for ways to make improvements in every aspect and then go out and deliver upon that and then stay, sleep in the building and have energy and passion. That's like a, that's like a Sean McVay's like that, Kyle Han, Shanahan's like that. Those are the types of guys that just love the game and are students of it and just want to do that and want to get better. 95 the decoy didn't like uh, didn't like Greg Williams but did he respect him that's a good point I don't know I, nobody's ever asked him we could do a cameo It'll cost you 40 bucks um, to ask Greg Williams these questions like would you come back to the Cleveland Browns I think he had loved his time in Cleveland I really do but I don't think he wanted to be you know he didn't want to be demoted from that you know interim head coach I think he he felt like he earned that and he should have stayed and to be honest I don't know if he did or not um, there were some things that he did great, some things that he didn't, and I don't know if he was a, a championship caliber coach as a head coach. Defense coordinator, love the guy. Love him. I think he's exactly what we need from a defense coordinator standpoint. So I think what's going to happen, if you guys want my honest opinion, what's going to happen is we make it through this season, and the season's going to be considered a wash very soon because I don't think we're going to be close to 500 by the time Deshaun gets back. And I know we're either going to be, you could either be six and five or five and six. I'm not even sure we're going to be at five wins by the time that Deshaun gets back. And I know that sounds crazy, but you look at the, you look at the teams we have ahead of us and it, it's not looking good. If we couldn't beat the Jets, we couldn't beat the Falcons and the Chargers who are, who were down to like, this is their, I mean, they, they were missing a lot of players in the Chargers and they still beat the crap out of us. That's a problem. So I don't know how we're going to be able to compete against some of these other teams that we're going to we're just about to face. The Ravens look very good. The Bengals look very good. We got uh, New England coming up. We got a lot of good teams, right? And there's really not Mark showing what's going on. Uh, there's really not a lot of cakewalks anymore. The Falcons and the Jets were probably the two, and maybe the Panthers, I guess you could say, but they weren't necessarily a cakewalk either because everybody's healthy. So. What I think is going to happen is once they realize the season is a wash, they're going to start kind of the process to go and see who else is out there and who are the up-and-coming guys. And this is going to be Joe Woods and Mike Prefer's last season. Mike Prefer has not developed a kick returner. 
basically gets mediocre punting, if not below average punting, and his he could not develop Cade York into a consistent kicker so far that we've seen. Can the kid blast it to the moon? Yes. But can he get it through the uprights with consistency? You know, it's been it's he's been missing more than he's been hitting lately, right? So I, I think a lot of it comes down to Mike Prefer and his inability, not to mention that fake punt by the Jets that we that they executed. So and and the onside kick recovery, almost two of them that we failed on. What we the second one we got lucky. But I think Mike Prefer and Joe Woods are gone at the end of the season. And depending upon what happens, I think we there is a world. There is a world where Kevin Stefanski does not return next year. I'm not guaranteeing that. I'm not saying I think I think if I was willing to bet, Kevin would be back, right? Unless it falls apart. Unless when Deshaun comes and we don't win a game at the end of the season and, and everybody's healthy and there's no like glaring excuse, then if that happens, we don't win or we or we lose a lot of those last games, Kevin might be gone as well. We might just clean house from a coaching perspective. Because they're not gonna blame it on A B. I think Jimmy Haslam likes A B too much. He's building his front office around A.B., so I don't think he's going to replace him. And Stefanski himself, I think I think he likes Stefanski. But if there's, an, if there's an epic collapse this season, we don't have the ability to repair it in the draft by getting a high draft pick because we traded them all away for Deshaun. So if we run into like a Denver Broncos situation like they're dealing with Russell Wilson and it doesn't work out, woo, all hell could break loose quickly. Um, I don't think we'd get rid of like Nick Chubb or Miles Garrett or anything, but you could see a guy like Kareem Hunt being on the block. Some uh, some of those kind of key role playing backup guys, you could see them moving just to get back into the first round if we have the ability to, or or or, or packaging a, a couple things together to get back into the first round. But a- anyway, going back to my original prediction, I think Joe Woods is out at the end of the season. He might even be out mid season if the pressure gets too deep. So I think that. Joe Woods is out. Mike Prefer's out. Kevin Stefanski will come back. He will get a chance to. They will replace his defensive coordinator. They will replace his special teams coordinator. And we will be looking at next season, full season, full preseason, full regular season with Deshaun Watson. Hopefully the guy stays healthy. I still think we're in the prime of Nick Chubb years. He's not getting worse. He's getting better every season. I still think we have many seasons left to go with Miles Garrett where he's going to be at the top of his game. So we have to be able to take these guys, score the points, and then defend the field and defend points from the other side to be able to remain competitive the entire time. And guys, if that happens, good. I do not think that we can do it with the current coaching staff that we have. Let me get to some of your comments here. All right, let's say let's take a look at the comments. All right, so going back to the top, uh, Irish Spaghetti said, "I'd rather lose and get blown uh, and get blown out than play in the close scoring a lot and lose at the end." We already talked about that. Utah says we could easily be five and zero. Oh. Um, Lamone Senior or Lamones Junior, maybe that's what it is. Uh, Denzel and Greedy are made out of glass, no doubt. We definitely miss Landry's fire and passion. That's a big one. We're, we're missing leadership on the field. Oh, can you imagine? All right. Um, I would trade JJ3. He's way overpaid and just sucks. If we can get anything from JJ3, I would as well. Um, JJ3 could kick rocks and take up space in the field. Bring him or Petten back. Now, nah, I mean, these guys aren't going to come back and be defensive coordinator. Mark, what's up? Uh, say what's up again. Uh, we play everyone close. Uh, we play everyone close. We could pull out Baltimore. Blow, okay, maybe. Um, best player in defense is on the IR. Uh, we definitely not beating the Bills. The Bills are looking good. After the fake punt, uh, Emerson out there just like it, just like that. The sooner the better the woods. Stefanski is the best coach we've had in decades. Only way it was possibility if Sean Payton, but I love Stefanski. And then Hambode says, what's up with all the Falcons players uh, we've been getting? I, I really don't know what the, the Falcons. There's some connection there. I would say, Killer, I would say you're right. I mean, obviously, by the numbers, that Kevin Stefanski is the best coach we've had. But I think one of the – I think he's – a, a great offensive coordinator. And I think that's the thing. Everybody's like, well, we're scoring points and we've got a great offense. Yeah, that we we know. That's why he qualified to be the coach. 
right? Because he was an offensive coordinator and he was a brilliant one, right? I think the challenge, though, is how can Kevin Stefanski adjust to, to running the team and being a head coach? You look back, okay, you look back to another brilliant head coach that we had back in the 90s, Bill Belichick. He was a great defensive coordinator. And we had good defenses with, with, with mediocre talent back then. We made it to the playoffs. And we won a game in the playoffs in 94 with mediocre talent. Just made the best of the defense. Right? But it wasn't until Bill learned how to take his foot off the gas and and sit back and actually run the show and then rely and outsource and rely it to those guys that he trusts the most. He's still working on the strategy. He's still managing the game, but he's got a defensive guy that he can manage. He's got an offensive guy who's going to manage that side of the game, and it works. Stefanski is a play-calling head coach. And, you know, McVay, Kyle Shanahan, those type of guys are into it. They can do it. Stefanski right now, it may be that he's putting too much energy into scheming around the offense and is not focused enough on special teams and defense, and that's really hurting the team. So Stefanski's going to have to find a more, a, a, a better leader on both the defensive side and the special teams in order to make a step forward in this team. And I really, I think we have the talent. We just have to have the execution, and that comes from who's the guys who are calling those plays, who are the ones that are setting up the strategy for it. All right. All right, guys. Been at it for a little while. I got to get in there. I got to pick up my daughter. Um, let me know what you think. Leave me a comment. I know there's a lot of live chat. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you agree with what I'm talking about. Uh, because I think that there's going to have to be a lot of things that change this year before the firings come. I think next year you're going to see the fight. The, in this offseason, you're going to see the firings. You're going to see a new coaching staff next year. But right now, we just got to live with what we got. So again, thanks guys for watching. I'll see you soon. Go Browns.